So this is gonna be called room correction for people that don't know what they're doing. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking about this. Number one, I'm not like by schooling or anything like that, an acoustic engineer, but I think part of the trade of engineering, you start to study sound, um, and you listen to a lot of speakers, you listen to a lot of, you know, compression and control of dynamics. You listen to frequency responses. You, you get, if you've been doing it a long time, you get to listen to a lot of different references. And I, as an engineer, I think every day of my life, I've at least listened in a studio or in a car or, or studied music. That's the crazy part about this business. You're not going to be anywhere in public where there's not music playing or there's not the arts of some form. And one of the things that I started to, to gravitate towards after recording school was the fact that you can actually, and the reason I'm bringing up recording school is because it was the first time in my life where I traveled to a place where they had a, a professionally done studio. And when you get to that studio, the first thing you notice is, wow, this sounds really different than my bedroom studio at my house. And then you start listening to monitors that are that are placed absolutely perfect in the room. And then you're going, they sound flat. They don't even sound like I've ever heard anything. So the first pair of speakers I heard were uh, in that regard were NS10s. And yeah, those are by by just by nature, they're they're a flat response speaker and they don't have a lot of bass. But the other room they had, uh, I don't remember the monitors that were in there at the time. I wasn't really there to learn about which monitors or what we were using, but um, I just remember the flatness of the low end and the flatness of the mids and the highs. Everything sounded like really even and it, it was it was like the thrill was gone. And I think that's why people still use the NS10s to this day. It's hard to get the NS10 to have um, excitement or, or to translate. So, so those became the mainstay. The other ones I did like a little post on Facebook about were called the iLouds, which they are these little micro mini monitors. Um, hard to get stuff to sound good on them. Like if your bass is too much on, on you know, a bigger setup or in your car, it, it's going to be way too much on those. So, so mixing has changed. So what are we talking about today? So what, what am I doing this whole video for? This is about room design and room acoustics. I'm going to give you right here in a minute, I'm going to put on my screen capture. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to talk about this. So the things you're going to need to do room acoustics to start out with, and we're gonna do this in the, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just trying to get an understanding, Doug. I'm gonna give you four or five different things you can do. This is really gonna help you if you're trying to get into this and start to understand acoustics. I'm not going to claim to be an acoustic engineer or an acoustic designer. This is not what this is about. There are acoustic engineers out there that can take this way beyond what this video is about. So if you're really, really doing a professional room, I would recommend hiring a person that understands more than just, you know, response and, and room correction and so forth. I believe I got lucky. Um, I believe I, I did a lot of praying and, and, and said, please help me. And the room became flat. So check this out. So number one, the first thing you want to do in your room is get an idea of what your room is. So let me sit down here and I'm going to put on a um, screen capture here in a second. And so the first thing we wanna do is there's a free software called the REW software. It's recording, it's, it's, an, it's a freeware, um, it's called Room EQ Wizard support those guys you can donate they give you a little place to donate here and you can just donate right on the link so if you look at this you can click there and donate to them but they give you all these cool tools now the second thing that i have is i purchased this from a company called mini dsp let me unhook this real quick we're not going to be doing any tests right now but this this little microphone here literally I think it was like 70 bucks. I mean, it's not it's not super expensive, but it comes with this calibration file. So you literally download this calibration file and this is as flat as you can get. You want this kind of mic, it's a test mic. And the reason you want a test mic is so you have a flat response. So when you're when you're capturing, it's as flat as it it can get. So you're not if you're trying to use your, you know, your AKG mic or your Neumann mic, 
it has a it has a frequency response and that's really what you're getting when you purchase a mic you're buying that mic for its not just the frequency response but the way that it captures and so forth test microphones on the other hand are inherently flat they want to be as flat as possible so when you when you measure the actual frequencies in your room you know what you're getting so when that graph shows up, you're going to see what, what you need to fix, what you need to pay attention to. So the first thing you want to do is download REW. It's free. We're trying to do this at your house. So you can do it. You could even do it tonight. So the first thing you're going to do is this. The first thing I did was I went to the room dynamic. So I wanted to see and get an understanding of my room. If you look up in the top right corner here, this is a room simulator, okay? Now this is how this works. So I'm gonna to talk to this camera because I'm not capturing anything up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to, if you look on screen, we're gonna be able to move the speakers around in the listening position. If you look up here, it has your length, your width, and your height. It also has your absorption. So you can look into different absor absorption, you can, study panels online you can look from different companies and the coefficients of how much absorption really this was a guesstimate for me i'm not saying you got to get too you know too analytical but if you understand math and you understand absorption qualities you understand what your room's made out of you can actually get these ratings on the material you're using and it'll it'll tell you um you know the different the, the different amounts that it's going to absorb and reflect and so forth then you get really deep into this stuff that's why i said some people that have went to school and and understand this on a on a higher level that could be super beneficial if you're trying to do this as a career so the next thing is if you look on this i can move these speakers wherever i need them to go now as i move them do you notice over here how this is flattening out? So this is just actual length in the room of where the speaker's sitting. So right here, if I sit that at two foot three from the, from the outside wall, and I sit that at two foot 11 from the back wall, the, the actual bass response of that speaker in the 80 to 120 range actually evened out. But if you look up here, the 140 range went way up, so it has, a, it has a really heavy peak. So what we did in our room was I moved those speakers around and I moved my listening position around until I figured out, okay, that is as flat as it's gonna get. Now, there's never gonna be such thing as so flat that it's like perfect. It's not gonna happen. So what you wanna do, the first thing you wanna do is get an understanding of where your monitors should be placed and then get an understanding of where you should be sitting. So this on screen is my head, okay? Not literally my head. I didn't like scan my head in there. So like that guy's got a weird head. He's got an X on there. So the thing is, is you're gonna move up and down. You see how that actually evens out in the bottom. I come up here, it, it totally disappears. So what we did was we moved these around until we got it as flat as, as we possibly could. So that's number one, that's what I would do. I would download REW, I would put in your room dimensions, and I would start from scratch. That's what we did when we redid this room. So the next thing was this. And so this is the first thing. So we get that under, under control. So I did that. The second thing was this, I went to, I'll tell you, Walmart. I went to Walmart, okay? Really, really high tech. I went to Walmart and I grabbed a mirror. You can just grab a mirror, like, like a dorm room mirror, something like that. So this is where it was. So now if you look at this mirror, it's like $6. Okay, so you get a mirror, six bucks, right? So for $6, you get a mirror. And you can see as I move that mirror around, you're seeing reflections. You see a reflection up there. That's from the listing position, by the way. So what you wanna do is my first room when I was like 19 years old, like I bought a house 19, 20 years old. And I ended up buying like these big ruminator kits. I spent like seven, $800 on these things, right? And I just started, me and my buddies start like posting things up on the walls and, and making it look cool and, and making little designs and stuff. And that's not what you're supposed to do 
what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to find the reflection points of your speakers. So the reason I said do the room thing first is because you don't want to not do that room thing or the room simulator and then you move your monitors and then you realize you put up all these panels and spend all this time and you realize well my monitors are not in the right position so once again that's probably why you can get a professional but i'm just giving you a little bit of a, a pointer to get you going in the right direction so now since we have our monitors where they're the flattest in the room what we're going to do then is we're going to find the reflection point so how do you do that you do it with a mirror because sound travels like light so if i put a light source into this mirror it's going to reflect and it's going to go off the wall somewhere what we want to do is find the first reflection points that's where the speaker is going to reflect first what it does if you don't correct those is you're going to have multiple images coming back to your ears at different times what that does is it distorts your it distorts your frequencies it distorts your your actual understanding of what's really being played it, it affects your compression and your dynamics it, it affects your reverbs and making correct decisions. It definitely affects your left right panning so you're not going to hear in the sound field where things are coming from. So you want to get those reflection points under control. Now here's the deal. So if I take this mirror, they can say you can do this with a buddy but sometimes you're like I'm super impatient. I'm about to work on something. The reason I said get this mirror is because you can literally just set it against the wall if you don't have any friends. <laughs> so, so anyways, so you, you push this, you take this mirror and you place it against the wall. So if you can see that, I think you can. These new iPhones are pretty sweet. Um, as you can see in the mirror, you can see that the mirror, the speaker in, a, in the room is actually reflecting where that panel is. So as I go across that, I wanna get that first, that is a first reflection point. That's the first spot that that thing's gonna hit. Now, literally you do that across your whole room. So you sit down in the listening position. So I would be sitting here in the listening position. And if I look there, I can see both of my speakers, the smaller speaker and the bigger speaker. So they're both actually right in line to where that mirror is reflecting back to my ear. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? So you're gonna go across your room and one by one, go all the way around your room and find those reflection points and place a panel in those points. Now I know somebody's probably gonna ask me, well, Doug, what, how do we know what panels to use, what not to use? The thing is, is the denser the panel, depending on your room and how you simulated it, the denser the panel, the more it's gonna absorb low frequencies. So in some rooms they would say, you know, you can leave an air gap. Let's say you buy a, a custom kit. Um, this was um, the London kit, Prime Acoustics. It's, it's their room 16. Then we have some other uh, sound panels. And the reason that I chose these is because of the measurement from my room. So we have the Olorex, which some, some guys would say, oh, those don't absorb anything or they give them a bad rap. The fact is, is they're really good at absorbing the frequencies that I needed to control. So I had these laying around and I actually realized that my room in the dimensions and after the room correction, I realized I didn't need as, as much thickness as I thought prior to doing the room simulator. So after I did the research and understood, okay, this base, my, my sub base is pretty flat. It's my 120, my 160. I started to realize that that these Allerex panels were actually the right choice for my room. So, so I started to put these in, and I'm not going to go too in depth because it's sort of a, a starter way of treating your room. So, we started to do this. We added these these reflection points. So, let's get back to that before I get way off on a tangent. So, the reflection point can be found with the mirror. Once you find those, place your panels there. Whatever kind of panels you have, I would say or recommend at least two inch two inch thick, not just these little tiny wavy one inch ones. Those, those are gonna probably trap like 4K and up where the thicker they are, which these ones are really good. Um, they have a lot, of, uh, a lot of density and a little space. And they also kept my room dimensions the same. The other problem with adding really heavy duty bass traps and why professionals build professional rooms is because you can change the actual dynamic, the, the length, width, and height of your room without even knowing it. And, and I did that in our other room and I started to compensate stuff that I actually added. So think about it that way. The thicker the panel, 
the the more the air gap because you can you can actually pull these from the wall the more absorption in the lower frequencies to get a really 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 dense bass trap that can trap 40 to 90 hertz it is is pretty intense um, you're gonna have to have a lot of space so if you have a huge room that's gonna be something you can look into if you don't have a huge room it's not gonna happen because you're gonna have to have at least like a foot two foot and then a huge amount of depth on your or density it's more about density on your actual trap this is how a trap works sound goes into the trap and it actually disperses into heat which is really incredible huh so once that heat it goes out past the uh past the panel tries to come back through and then that sound literally dissipates and it turns it down and then it comes into and it actually gets heat again the reason we're talking about, let me show you this um, real quick while we're here. But if you look at this one here, that's a that's a corner panel. And the reason that they, they have you mount them this way is because you're leaving an air gap in the corner. And leaving that air gap actually increases the, um, it increases the effectiveness of that panel. So think about it that way. So when you're making base traps, um, companies like this, they actually make these impalers that make them look real cool. So you can see that over here and over there. But yeah, once you once you have that reflection point like that, it's going to it's going to increase the actual overall absorption quality of that panel. Now that's only a two two inch panel. I used to have like like six to eight inch panels in those corners, and like I said, I started to realize I was changing changing the 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 width of my room. And it, and it really didn't benefit. It just made it sound more, more closed in. So this, this room, by the grace of God, sounds super even, okay? Because I, I'm not like some super, super, super uh, analytical guy. I really think it was length, width, height, just taking the time to move the speakers around in the room simulator and then, and then moving my, my chair to the exact length to get it as flat as possible. So I can give myself a lot of credit on this but it's still a lot of things had to come together to make it happen. This, this panel kit that I bought, it came up and, and uh, sort of came to my, you know, I saw it online. I said, dude, that's probably the, the right way to go. It looks good. And it's, it's really, really, really where the frequencies on my, um, on my room simulator really need to be controlled. And it was like the perfect amount of panels. So with that being said, in my long winded story again, Number one, do the room simulator. See where your monitors need to sit. See where your chair needs to be or your desk. Number two, get a mirror and, and get those first reflection points and, and make sure that those reflection points are what you think they are. Number three, which could have been part of number one, buy your room calibration mic, okay? So your room calibration mic is the next step. So now we're gonna, we're gonna take a measurement of the room and see where we're at. Now this is where I was like blown away, okay? So if you've been looking at the screen, um, this is my room, this frequency response here. So this is an average of the mic stuff. Now I put a, I put a copy of a television on there and that's this television, so it's my HDMI out so you can hear what this, or see what this looks like. Here is this, okay? So if I take all these off, and you look at the TV, that's the frequency response of the television. This is way down. It doesn't even reproduce that. Um, well, it does, but not really well. And then you have dips and peaks and valleys. When, when you look at this room as an average of multiples, you see that it still has a little bit of a, a bump here, but this is lifted but it's, it's still flat. I've never had a room come up that flat. So this is what you do. You go into this and you're actually, now you can watch videos on REW and how to use it. That's not what this video is about. But you're gonna place your microphone in your listening position. There's two files for this. There's one 90 degree and then there's one straight. So make sure you pick the right one. And then you're gonna take a few measurements around your, around your listening position. This is what mine came up with. Now this is pre-EQ, okay? This company, Mini DSP, 
they make EQ boxes that go between your interface and your speakers. So it goes in. So, so this is what my room looks like before any of that. So now when, when I do this test, and we can do this maybe in a later video, but this was just to give you an understanding. Once I do that test, then I can see where I need to change things. Now, let me explain something to you. This room is insanely flat. Like I said, it's, it's sort of a, to me, it's a divine thing. It's like, how could I have done that? I mean, I, I moved into this building and just got lucky with the dimensions. Um, and it came out pretty flat. Now that doesn't mean it's, it's totally flat, but if you look at this in depth, if I really zoomed in, you're going to notice there's some, there's some jumps, I mean, up and down, but that's what we're going to do with this EQ. So the room EQ is going to take care of that. So when it sees that dip, it might lift, you know, six or seven dBs. So this is what we purchased and I'm going to end the video like this so you can get an understanding. So here's, here's the eq that i purchased it's just a little box and sorry i'm trying to do this backwards but it has an analog in and an analog out it's just a pass through before it goes to my amplifier now with that being said what that does is it hooks up usb and it has a software with it you can look at mini dsp and look at their website Mini DSP makes these boxes that, that can work with REW where you can go over to the EQ page. I'm about to show you here. So we'll keep this camera here to end the video so I can stop. But So if you go over to the EQ page, you can see that... Now check this out. So I can go in here, which I haven't done yet. I, I'm actually really, really happy with the room the way it sits. So I can go to Filter... And I can look at the filter and say, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to have a full range speaker. This is like my left measurement, let's say. Let's turn this down. So I have a left measurement. And I want to say, so this is what we're, we're looking to achieve here, is this flatness, okay? And I can say, let's set a target level to that. And let's go to match response to target. So when I hit match response to target, it's gonna make points to where it's gonna EQ. Isn't that funny? <laughs> it, it, it blows my mind. I mean, before when I used this in that other room, it had like 17 points and it was trying to move all this stuff. And I'm like, oh man, this time it, it literally added three points. Now I could be using this software different. I actually did this on a Windows computer. So it might just be the software. But um, this is a Mac, and I downloaded it just for this video. But it's going to, you see how it says the gain at 38, it's going to change at 6. 92, it's going to change at 8. 77, it's going to change at 5. So that's what the EQ is going to do. That's the fourth stage. So it goes, so once you get to that point where you have these, these marks, this is just a basic temporary thing. I did this on a Windows computer and the Windows computer had about 16 different points, okay? And then that's going to actually fill in the gaps to what my room missed. So we're gonna use the EQ as the fourth stage um, to get that even, that balance even more accurate or, or just that more precise. So the, the four stages to doing room acoustics for people that have no clue what they're doing, number one, is download REW and look at your room. So you got to analyze the room. Number two is buy a mirror from Walmart or some other place, or if you have a mirror in your house, then find your reflection points by moving that mirror around the room while you sit in the listening position. Number three is then you're going to use your microphone. I said mini DSP is a great one. There's other companies that have, you know, mics, but this is more for people that are trying to get started with this and still get great results. It's not like this is cheap or something, or it's not going to give you the results because this is one of those things that's dependent on more than just the software. So number three is then do your measurements and understand if your room's really representing what the room simulator did. And then you can start to move around and, and just and just try out different things. And number four is, is your correction. So as you're seeing on screen here, 
you see how I'm moving these things up and down. When I match response to target, it's going to give me an EQ filter. So num along with number four is get yourself a box from mini DSP or any other company that makes these boxes that can go in between your interface and your monitors or monitors that actually have it built in, which we have here from IK Multimedia. I'd love to do a test on these. But then you're going to be on the route to run to understanding. Hey, my room's actually okay. I'm, you know, I I moved my my desk back to five one in the room. It's five foot one from this. My monitors are three foot eleven from the wall, and that was my best response. So the reason that this is so important is because if this is what you're doing for a living, you have to know what you're listening to is accurate. Some of the greatest rooms on this planet are designed by some of the greatest acoustic engineers. And you walk into these rooms and you go, wow, man, and why does my stuff sound good when it leaves out of there? Um, a lot of it has to do with those, those engineers tweaking that room to be, or considered it a tuned room, they would call it. So it's tuned to the response. When you looked at, when you looked at the uh, frequency response of this room, it is insanely accurate. And um, I would say, do your research, do your homework, and find out what you need. If you have big, 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 massive jumps in the 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hertz range, you may have to, you know, acquire some bigger bass traps and get around some people, Mondo traps or uh, Ethan Weiner. I, I think he did a lot, a lot of videos on this and he's an incredible, incredible guy to talk to a company like that. Um, and see, okay, this is what my room is. This is what I'm working with. And that's why I said from the beginning of this video, don't, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, go hire, a, you know, an acoustic engineer and, and really get you where you want to go because I'll end the video like this, but number one, um, room acoustics and absorption is different than, than actually isolating a room. So you're still, this is a brick building. It's actually concrete and you'll still hear some some low rumble from from the street and things like that but there's there's people that have actually acquired me as an engineer to try to isolate their room that's a totally different subject this is about making your room sound good inside so you can make you know really good decisions for people's records so the I'll end the video like this the the most the most precise and the most important things that I'm hearing in the room are the low end, um, you know, and how balanced it is. And I'm, I'm noticing when people send me stuff to work on immediately, if there's something out of line or if something doesn't sound right or something's just a little bit off, um, I'm noticing, you know, differences in reverb and reflections. I'm noticing um, the preciseness or precision of my compressors more. And um, everything just sounds better and I make better decisions. So, I think a guy on a forum I was reading one time said, the better the room, the better the mix. And, and I really believe that. So that's how important this is. Get your room right. Do, the, do as, as much as you can. Um, and if all else fails, send it to me. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, but it's fun to do. I, I think if you're going to be a professional engineer and this is something you want to do for a living, I think you have to have a little bit of a background in acoustics. And, and start to understand it. So my name is Doug Jenkins. Thanks for continuing to watch these videos. And hopefully this helps somebody out there. So you got four quick ways to start working on your room. We'll see you.